Good morning. The time right now is 823 and we're getting back to the mass shooting in Uvalde in which a gunman killed 19 young children and two teachers. It is now the latest of an increasingly common type of U.S. tragedy, one that experts say comes with rising levels of anxiety and other mental health problems for adults and especially children. Joining us this morning to talk about that is Honor Sithol, who is a professional counselor here in the uh, North Texas area here. Good morning to you. Hey, good morning, Cleo. Yeah. Let's get into this. I know it's been a, a rough week for, for many, many people. How do tragedies yeah. like this impact our mental health? Well, first of all, I'll say my condolences to the families and everyone who's dealing with this here. And all of us are going through this mass grieving at the same time. So it's an impact on everybody. And unfortunately, we can't turn to anyone else because we're going through it. But to go right into your, with your question to answer it. And then when things like this happen, it creates trauma. And trauma usually the first signals are anxiety. Because we're all going to suffer from some anxiety. And anxiety starts to show itself as anger, frustration, feelings of helplessness. And when they just happen, we're all running, trying to make things happen. But usually there's an after effect that's lingering. And that's when we start to see the mental health impact. For adults, it will come out as anger, frustrations, uh, hopelessness. And in children, it will start to manifest itself as sometimes night terrors, tantrums, fears that are unreasonable, and regression in their development. So those are things we're going to be looking at from both perspectives. Yeah. So, Honor, you know, you laid out what we should be looking out for. When we do start to see those signs, what do we do? What is the next step? Uh, for, let's start for adults, it's good to talk to your peers and to talk to your friends, your family, and talk about how you're feeling and identifying it. And also, the most important thing is to acknowledge the fact that you are grieving. As you're grieving, you go through different ranges of emotions from anger, sadness, depression, helplessness and just those are things we got to figure out and be honest with ourselves how we're feeling and if it's something that we can resolve at the family level obviously you would have to talk to a professional now in children we are primarily responsible for them as the parents we need to create an environment where they can feel comfortable to come home and talk to us and we need to be open up with them and answer their questions at a kid level. And also we have to limit the amount of exposure they get to the news and information about this because it can serve as re-traumatization. And we also have to reassure them that the adults and the community are doing everything that they can do to support them through this tragedy and that everything is gonna be okay. And as well, if this persists, we can always take them to child a psychologist or any counselor that's trained in dealing with children. You know, Honor, unfortunately, this happens far too often, and we know there's some deep conversations about, you know, when will this actually end? Yes. Um, uh -huh. there's, there, there's some people out there that may feel a little desensitized to this and may feel like, you know, they're okay. Is that also a symptom of distress? Yes, absolutely. It's a symptom of distress because we've been worn down that it doesn't affect us. And so it is definitely a sign of distress. Honor, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, before we go here, can you put your information out there so that people can reach out to you? Sure. You can find me at honorsatola.com or call my office at 972-704-1372 or social media handle at honorrsatola.com you'll find me. Honor, uh, thank you for your, your insight and perspective this morning. Thank you.